Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we've got Tweed on. How are you doing, Tweed? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing so good. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Uh, I've been out on PTO for like a couple of weeks now, so I'm like ready to get back to it. Um, nice. So I am, I, am, uh, I am very excited to have you on the show because we're talking about one of my favorite things, which is video. And uh, I'm really excited to dig into that. We're going to get into some open source. We're going to get into web components, like all sorts of good things. But before we do any of that, let's talk a little bit about you. So for folks who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a bit of a background? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so my name is Twee. I am a community engineer at Mux. And for people who are tuning in who may not be familiar with Mux, Mux is the video API for developers. And that's whether you want to build a real-time, live, or on-demand video application or experience. Um, and I am one of the people who has the pleasure of creating resources for developers like you, whether that's blogs or videos or coming on to this live stream as a guest in order <laughs> to help you build whatever video stuff you want. I love that. Okay, so um, we talked about Mux, but Tui, I want to hear about you. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, my my favorite topic. And apparently, um, you okay, need to talk fast so... because Cassidy's on the on the attack right now. <gasps> oh, yeah, I was I was wondering who's doing the boops. <laughs> yeah, if Cass. if the if the screen fills entirely, you got to talk like you're underwater. Okay, so we're, at some point, it's just going to be like <laughs> treading. <laughs> Okay, so uh, me, I once upon a time was uh, actually a marketer. Uh, I was not, I, did, I wasn't a developer straight away. Um, fast forward a little bit, I became a product engineer, worked a little bit on internal tools, uh, spent a good chunk of time in ed tech. Mm. Then I did that pivot into DevRel because I was craving more connection with the community. I wanted to do more creating resources for developers and, uh, and helping them and was fortunate enough to do it full time, typical DevRel story. Uh, and then personally, I'm in the middle of a move right now, moving oh. into my first house. Oh. Not ownership, but house. <laughs> nice, nice. That is always, uh, it's really nice to have a house like yes it is a I... it is a good feeling um yes <laughs> cassidy uh paused her boop attack to subscribe thank you very much i also saw that uh chris is at is at 39 months of subscription which is intense um <laughs> uh, cassidy you you made a good attempt i've actually upped the difficulty for the boop flood because of you so um you're welcome. <laughs> what's what's the, what's the requirement for boops? Is it like you can't? Does do you limit the number of click? I don't know. I don't so know they if it's like they only live on the pooping. screen for a little bit, and you. So basically, multiple people need to coordinate to do the flood now because uh, it it uh, you can't get enough on the screen fast enough to uh, to do it just by yourself. Um. Okay. So nana nana boo boo Cassidy. Uh, oh, Chris, come on. Okay, well, now we're in trouble. Um, <laughs> she, she's just going to get her Discord now to do the boots. Just like get 10 people to coordinate. She has the power. She has the power. Um, oh, there they are, Tom Zoras. They're working. Uh, great. So cool. We've mobilized the Cassidy Discord. Great. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today, I guess. But... <laughs> But uh, okay, so we we have um, a lot to talk about today. We're we're going to dig into video. So you mentioned that Mux is the the kind of video API for developers. It's um, yeah, and so I talk a lot about Cloudinary for for images. You kind of do like the the mm -hmm. I use it for a lot of my image processing. And so you're saying that yeah. Mux is sort of a, a similar general approach where it's like this is developer focused you kind of modify things on the fly um how does that like what does that work like for me as a developer if i i've got a video i want to use mux what do i do yeah. do i have to go to a dashboard am i writing a bunch of code like how am i using it 
So I mentioned that it's a video API for developers. So you would take to take you through the journey. Let's say you want to build something with video. You make an account. Um, you could spend time in Postman just making requests to things, um, creating a video asset, creating a live stream. What else can you create? Create direct uploads. And then you can build something on the front end and the back end and use that API underneath to accomplish whatever it is that you want. Nice, nice, nice. That, um, so that's actually not like I, I think we're going to end up using Mux today, but that's not really what we're talking about. We're we're talking about something yes. that Mux built, right? So yes, let's let's dig a little bit into the backstory of this, and I'm going to stand on my tiptoes yeah. so that people can see us. <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna look at my um, nostrils. Yeah, while all right, we, everybody. While just, we hello, hi. We're we're doing it. Um, so when when you're talking about video on the web uh video yeah. on the web is is very challenging because it always feels like either you're going to spend a million dollars on bandwidth or you have to use youtube or you just like you like i don't see people not using embedded players because it's such a pain yeah it's a huge oh, pain to do come on little kabooper <laughs> Yeah, we've reached the point where now my computer is struggling. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, it's funny that you made a. It's funny that you made a swimming comparison early because I actually can't tread water. So we're joking oh. that we're. Wait, are you? Our head is above water, but like I actually can't tread. You're not buoyant. I'm not buoyant. <laughs> I like understand there's a technique to be buoyant, but I. I think I just, I can't get over the mental, like the water is near my face thing. Mm, mm. I just feel like I'm drowning all the time. So you're, 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 as you're treading water, you're thinking the water's too close to my face. I should drown. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I think, I think people who tread water, um, when I think of it, it seems like it's a natural process for the water to like enter your mouth, but like you're not going to drown or anything. There's just like because of the yeah. the way the water moves, it's going to hit your face. But yeah. to me, as soon as water hits my chin, I'm like, it's the end. You're it's over the it. End. Yep. I get it. That's it. Yeah, that's good. I actually um, I went snorkeling in the in the ocean. Um, and so I just had this experience of uh, of having like to tread water and what I forgot because I don't spend a lot of time in the ocean is two things. One, a snorkel absolutely does not seal over a mustache. And so my right. mask was leaking slowly the whole time, which made it fun. Right. Um, so I ended up yeah. because of that, both snorting salt water, which was really unpleasant. And as I was treading water, like a wave hit me in the face and I swallowed a bunch of salt water. And then I was like gagging. I'm like trying to tread water and cough at the same time. Uh, it didn't go right. particularly well for me, but I saw sea anemones, and I thought that was pretty cool. Anemones? That, that nice. Yeah. So 1010 would do again? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yes, I would totally do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm reading the, the chat. Yeah, the, the Vaseline over the mustache, they offered to do that. And I was, I was like, I don't really want to be covered in Vaseline for the rest of the day, though. So, no. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways, enough about my uh, okay. No more, no more treading water video. talk. Let's talk yes. about video. We're talking about video and how it's it's a pain in the freaking neck. It's a pain in the patoot, and I want it to be easier. And it sounds like y'all have been working on something to make it easier. Yeah, I um to give you some perspective on on what I felt about video before I started working at Mux because coming to work at Mux is really the first time I've delved into video and really understood or really saw for the first time how big the ecosystem is or like what parts uh, are involved in video infra. So before I joined Mux, I thought video was complicated already, but all I really thought was players. Player mm. options out there suck, and I don't have a lot of control over the players. Mm -hmm. Then I came to Mux, and then you know the company 
gives you training and there's a giant system diagram about everything that's actually involved with video infra, hosting, delivery, encoding, distribution. Um, and it made video even more scary. Mm -hmm. um, but then I found out that Mux has a bunch of features and a bunch of products that make it easier for developers. Um, one thing is like making the cost uh, more affordable and more easy to understand uh, when it comes to like storage, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the open source side, the open source team has been working on things like Media Chrome that make even just the player part of video infra just a little bit better for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there, there are a few things like, you know, it's it's interesting because I feel like in in my journey through the internet right like i would always offload anything that was heavy to another service you're you're uploading video to right. youtube because youtube doesn't charge you for bandwidth right but then your whole experience is locked inside of youtube and you've yeah. got issues where like you know you have to you have to follow youtube's rules and and there's this looming threat that if you make a mistake you could get your whole thing taken down with no notice and uh and it also creates yeah. a lot of like incentives that i don't know are like in a lot of cases not the incentives you want like i don't necessarily want some of my videos to have this sense of like well we didn't get maximum view count and so this video was a failure like not everything needs to be uh, you know matching an algorithm or or playing that game sometimes you make something because it's useful and it's okay that it's niche and not that many people in total are going to watch it because the people who do watch it are going to get a ton of value and you know there's there's just all these weird incentives when you start going like the social media route with video but if you put right. it on an S3 bucket and you're just like constantly sending that video to people, it is exorbitantly expensive to pay for that bandwidth if anything gets any kind of traction. So, you know, mm -hmm. services like Mux, I know, make that easier by you know, optimizing the, the format and things like that. But then you run into this problem of, okay, but I just want people to be able to play it. So you use the native video element and it's fine. It mostly works, but you're missing things. Yeah, but it's not exactly what you want. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's kind of hard to do stuff with. Um, and so it always just starts pointing you back, well, maybe I'll use a different service like like Vimeo or Wistia or, you know, any of these others that are out there that that kind of they'll host it, they'll do the streaming, and they give you a custom player that's easier to, to style up. And it's like, oh, my goodness, this is... Like now I'm just playing a different game, right? Where now, now I'm paying yeah. for this very expensive annual service that all I really wanted was a custom media player. Um, and yes. so what I find I'm... exciting is that what you're talking about with this this open source component here, um, which is called Media Chrome, yeah. right? Yes, Media Chrome. So, so Media Chrome is offering a an unopinionated way to play video from any source right so if i have an mp4 file if i'm using yes. mux video if i'm using yes. any anything i can just throw it into this and get a good experience that i can customize yes so for me uh before coming to mux i would say that my top pain points in finding a player uh were well number one it was i couldn't get it to look exactly the way that i wanted mm. so there's a player that exists out there the controls are the way they are and mm -hmm. maybe you can change the color <laughs> mm -hmm. um and maybe you can add a logo right and then and talking we want to go you, full win now, yes we want to go full customization but talking to you it sounds like other issues that you've had being on other video platforms where they have stricter rules on what it is that you can do other problems seem to be cost mm -hmm. and what's the other one? Oh, like strict rules like let's say you're using youtube you gotta have uh you have to have a video host on youtube and you can't have it hosted somewhere else mm -hmm. those seem like the top problems that i'm hearing right Sounds would you say right. so yeah yes so with media chrome because of the way the our open source team built it, they separated out the concerns. The concerns being the media source and the controls. So 
what happens in the end is because of the separation of concerns, you have greater control and freedom over what the player looks like. And you have greater control and freedom over where you host your video, which mm. as we talked about were some of the biggest problems people couldn't choose. It was, I, okay, cool. Like maybe we have a free player, but there are restrictions over here. But now the world is your oyster. The world is your oyster with Media Chrome. Yeah, and I do love that. And I'm I'm starting to see just a slight bit of uh, video stuttering, which is super ironic. Um, so let's just keep our fingers crossed here that nothing goes wrong with the stream today. Uh, we have, I'm actually really nervous because we have people working on our house today. They're like, we have chimney work happening. And yesterday they <gasps> blew the breaker and took my whole house down. So if at some point, viewers, uh, <laughs> this just goes dark, I apologize and we will, we will reschedule, but I think we're going to be okay. I have faith in us. Um, but all that being said, so yes, uh, so a customizable web, uh, web video experience is, is really great. And then the other thing about it too, is like making it feel approachable. Like I, when I want to put something on the internet, I don't necessarily want to spend all my time, like laying the foundation to build the thing that I want. I just want to be able to build the thing that I want. So if I have an idea for say, I want to build a course site, or I want to, you know, provide, um, uh, I'm doing a conference and I want to embed a video that's not necessarily on YouTube, or I want to do like a bonus content that I wouldn't put on YouTube. And it's like something that you go to from so like just anywhere where I really want to control the experience. What I want to be building is the experience, right? I want to, I want to build yes. out the value for the people who are coming to watch those videos. I don't want to spend days or weeks building out my own custom media player because that like that, that's a distraction from building the thing that I want to build. Right. I'm, so I'm going for like minimum time to get up and running with an idea and, and to be able to actually deliver on the, the vision, not on the foundations that enable the vision. Yeah, you, so something that I want to focus on that you talked about was the building part. Mm -hmm. And I want to stress something about media Chrome for our viewers, which is Media Chrome is actually not a video player. So we oh. talk about it being able to make video players, but it is it is not a video player. It's actually a toolkit. It is a lower level toolkit, lower level than a media player, mm -hmm. a toolkit that you can use to modularly put together the media player of your dreams. Okay. 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 Um, Yes. Yes. So I, that's what I really want to stress. It's not a video player, but it you. enables you to build a, a video player. Cool. Okay. So then that is a good distinction because I, I hadn't actually picked up on that when we originally talked about it. So what else can I build yes. with Media Chrome? So because it's a toolkit for building media players, yes, you can build video players, but you can also build audio players because mm. audio is media so if you <laughs> wanted to build something like spotify web player you could if you wanted to build something like the netflix player the youtube player the vimeo player you can too mm. that's okay so that's cool all right well um what so how how is this built like is it built using a framework is it um you know what do i need to install if i'm going to use it Okay, good question. Good question. So, uh, so Media Player, I mean, Media Chrome is built with web components. Uh, mm. And for people who may not be familiar with web components, they are custom HTML elements. What does this mean if, it's, they're, if they're built with custom HTML elements? It means that you do not have to use or install a framework like React or Vue um, to use Media Chrome. You can just oh, so use straight vanilla Sorry. HTML. But if you wanted to use it with a framework, you could, and it would all be fine. Uh, slight little caveat with React, but virtually it's all gravy. I do love gravy. We were talking about poutine in the chat earlier, so 
we're oh, really? staying on okay. we're on brand on theme here um everything is full circle there there is <laughs> a reason there's a connection uh okay great so i don't think i have any other questions that aren't going to result in uh, me needing to look at a screen so i think i'm going to switch us over into pair programming mode so that we can start okay rolling. okay let's do it so here we go now this needs to be off the screen and i'm going to uh start out by doing a quick shout out We've got Amanda here with us today from White Coat Captioning, taking down everything we're saying. So thank you very much for that. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic, all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Um, and we are talking to Twee. So make sure you head over and uh, and and say what up, give a follow, do all the, all the good things. Um, if you want to follow along with the captions, they are on the homepage of the site, learnwithjason.dev. Um, and we are talking today not about Mux directly, but we will be playing with a little bit of Mux stuff. And if I yeah. want to find this uh, Media Chrome, how does one find that? So I think a good starting point for this would be the docs. Okay. Let me share with you so we can get it shared with the audience. I found Actually, a GitHub repo. I don't know why I sent it in our uh, private real-time chat. I could have just sent it on uh, Twitch. We're slow today. Everybody, these are the docs. You can start here. Get started with Media Chrome. Got it. All right, so here is the documentation. And I'm going to reshare these because I've got a a thingy setup that puts all of the links that I share into a place so that they end up in the show notes. Um, yeah. And then this is the, this is the homepage for it, right? Yes. That is, that is a site that we have for it. I do like this in that. So the cool thing about this site is you can hover over certain parts of that make up a player with media Chrome oh. and you can see where, especially if you're visual, especially if you're visual, you can hover over these and it will tell you which part of the media player that specific component relates to That's super uh, with cool. extra details underneath. But the link that I sent in the Twitch chat is where we would start coding with. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So with that, I have nothing open. So I'm going to, let's go to, the terminal here, and then I'm going to go to uh, get in here, and then let's how like what should I should I start a certain type of project or? Okay, okay. So remember when we talked about how Media Chrome is built with web components, which mm -hmm. is custom like HTML elements, mm -hmm. and that we don't have to install a framework or anything. Mm -hmm. We can just use plain vanilla HTML. Well. Because we can do that, we don't need to be in the terminal. We can just open a code sandbox. Oh, we can open a code sandbox. All right, all right, all right. Let's do it. Code sandbox time. <laughs> okay, so I have. Okay. I'm gonna sign in here. Yes. Okay. So from here, I believe Code Sandbox has, um, you can just click a new sandbox and I think it will tell you, yeah, pick just vanilla HTML or wherever HTML is. Yes. Okay, here's our vanilla. Beautiful, beautiful. We will not be using any index.js situation. We can just hang out in index.html land. Got it. Let me just drop this yes. thing. Okay, I'm ready. I'm gonna actually okay. delete this for uh, to keep us from getting confused. Then. All right, sounds good. From here, uh, let's go to the getting started docs that I posted in the Twitch chat, and we can kind of like go back and forth between the docs and our code sandbox editor. Yeah, I'm just gonna put. Like, I don't know why it doesn't have the actual style sheet in here. So I'm going to, maybe that was included in the the JavaScript, but that, um, 
I don't know that there's anything actually in it, but is that working? Yeah. Okay. That's working. So back to the docs I go. Yes. So from here under getting started, there is, if you scroll down to the hosted option in code sandbox, we can just copy this script tag. Got it. Stick it in an HTML file and we're good to go. Okay. It awesome. Is, it is done. And I'm going to close. Can I make this go? Yeah, I can. I'm going to close that so we can see more of what's going on. And uh, I just want to address a comment in the Twitter chat. They said, oh, no, the CSS has started. Okay. <laughs> and Newman, I know how you feel. Okay. I, if I don't have to do CSS, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, if I have to, I can. But I'm hoping that what we're about to do when we get to the styling section will make you feel better about styling your media player. Yeah. My, uh, my issue is always that once I start, I'll like sit and tweak it for the whole episode. Like when, when I'm solo, I'll be like, I'm going to build a real time thing today. And then I spend like 70 of the 90 minutes just styling up a div. <laughs> And then I'm like, oh no, I'm out of time. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but here, so we have our script tag. Yes. I think we can get started by if we go back to the docs, our wonderful docs. If we scroll down into, I think, uh, scroll down some more into customizing the controls. This is a good snippet to copy to get started. So okay. we can try and talk about what are the major parts okay. um, in a media player built with Media Chrome. So copy this, go back to your code editor and just paste her on in there. Or yeah, your code sandbox, I mean. Da -da. Okay. Okay. We have what seems like a media player mm -hmm. here. Let's um let's talk about what it is that we're or like what are the major components that we're looking at here with this media player. So earlier I talked about how users get the level of customization that they want and seemingly crave mm -hmm. because we've separated out those concerns and you can see them here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that I want to draw your attention to, everyone, is the all the little controls or media components under media control bar in the HTML. Mm -hmm. So we have the media play button, media mute button, media volume range. All of those are the UI controls that we're going to be interacting with. By themselves, they are just presentational. Okay. Oh, the, so they don't. Uh, do they not do anything right now? They do something right now, but I'll tell you why that is. Okay. Uh, the second thing that I want to draw your attention to is the video tag. So video, slot, media, source, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. That is our media source. Uh, right now, the video is in Mux video, but I assure you we can use videos that are not Mux. Mm -hmm. we'll, we will get to that, but that is the media source. And then the third thing that I really want to draw your attention to is the media controller. That thing, you know, time and time again, we'll talk about how there are, there are uh, lesser smart components and smart components. Media <laughs> controller, <laughs> lesser smart, we know what we're saying here. Um, so media controller is the thing that runs the show. Me, uh, the controls under media control bar, they don't know about the media source. The media source doesn't know about the controls. Media controller, however, is what listens to the events that are emitted when a user clicks on a control. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when the media controller hears those events, they will do something with the media source. So for example, if the user clicks on media play buttons, there's going to be an event emitted that's like the play event. Media controller is going to be like, ah, just heard the play event. Let's trigger dot play on the media source. Mm -hmm. And that is why, although the controls are presentational components by themselves, 
because the media controller is there and everything is inside the media controller, that flow of information is what makes it possible. So if you click play a video, well, I guess people can't hear, but that it's not important, but the video is playing. Right. So that's, that's cool. And what I like about this is that by default, by just kind of copy pasting this stuff, it works. I can embed this right now. No more work. I am now good to go. And this is intuitive enough that I can see things like, I don't want picture in picture. So I'm just going to delete yes. that and yes. boom, gone. Right. And so that I think is, is one of the really cool things here is that I'm not trying to like, one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of custom players that gets really challenging is that you're, you're getting something that comes with a lot of built-in styles and a lot of built-in yeah. assumptions. And so then when you yep. want to change them, you're having to copy paste the whole, uh, the whole style sheet and then figure out which piece of the style sheet is, is relevant to like which element in the thing. And like, you know, those can be well-designed and pretty easy to manage but it's still a thing you have to manage. You have to get in there and really like reverse engineer the way that this component is put together. And so the nice thing about having it out in front like this with just the, the custom elements is these are self descriptive enough that I can, before I do anything, I don't have to dig in and figure out how this thing is constructed to like figure out how to, you know, do a display none on an event on a element that I don't want or something like that. I'm instead able to just say, oh, I don't want this, delete it, right? That is super cool. Yeah, it's uh, when you look at the media controls, it's very clear which ones are there. Um, you can also easily rearrange them. So they appear in that bottom bar there in the order that they are in the DOM. So if you're like, I want the play button to be at the end for whatever mm -hmm. reason, you could totally do that. Yeah, it's really handy. Yes, uh, there's a question. Adrian Engine says, is there a custom element for an overlay with video info a la Netflix? In terms of the overlay, I believe there is an overlay situation that is possible. Um, we can get into that a little later, but for now, let's go incrementally from this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we are familiar, at this point, we're familiar with the major players inside of the component, we see that it, the player controls are pretty intuitive. They're listed. Well, they render in the order that they're listed in the DOM. We can easily rearrange them. From here, what if we, okay, so back in the day when you used other video players, mm -hmm. have you ever had the, the feeling that you wanted to move video controls somewhere else like have you ever been like i don't really like all the buttons at the bottom maybe i want to put them somewhere else or do mm -hmm. you are you somebody who likes them all at the bottom no i i think you know depending on the the use case right like one of the things that i like about say netflix is that you have you know you've got your your controls here and then there's like a couple items up here and there's info over here it, like it's a little more it feels integrated. It's not like we slapped a video into a pre-made player and like the controls will always be like this at the bottom and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so I do like the idea of being able to, to kind of mess with the UI, like obviously within reason chat, don't let's not get wild here, but um, you can, you can, you can start to make it feel more like your own brand. I think if you are intentional about like, moving a little bit of stuff in a way that that makes it feel yours yes i uh i want to i want to do a little bit better about monitoring the chat so somebody asked uh what about keyboard shortcuts so i wanted to point this out because they are well documented in the docs we could also play around with them a little bit so in the docs i will paste in the twitch chat just so that everybody can see there's a section called keyboard shortcuts and it outlines all the keyboard shortcuts that you're able to use with a media player mm -hmm. um, built with media Chrome. Uh, a cool feature related to keyboard shortcuts that we can take a look at is you can actually disable 
the keyboard shortcuts if you want for whatever reason. You could disable all of the keyboard shortcuts. You can disable specific keyboard shortcuts. Mm -hmm. So there are keyboard shortcuts built in. So we could nice. take a we could take a little segue into shortcuts just so that people can see what's well, available. Let's, yes, okay. So if I hit M, it's muted. If I hit F, wait, can I do oh, it? Okay. So this is an interesting thing. Do you see errors at the bottom of your? Um... Yes, full screen is that support about is full not. Screen? Yes. So okay, the full screen. This is what I found out when I was working with this myself. Um, there's just some interesting stuff going on with the code sandbox preview that they prevent you from using like full screen capability is what I understand. Oh, if, okay. Yes. However, if you copy that little URL above the player um, and you open it in another window, if you try to full screen, it will work there. Oh, I think, is this because of, um, I, I bet it's because of iframes. And also yeah, I have so not my, saved uh, this. Dylan, he heads the open source team. He commented in the chat. He said, full screen doesn't work in Code Sandbox. Crying robot face. If you inspect the Code Sandbox iframe, they don't have allow full screen. So that is the secret to why. But now it does work. work. So I'm, I'm hitting yes. F and it's just doing the thing, right? So that's yep. good. Um, yep. And then I can mute. And I can go like left is yes. jumping, right is jumping. Speak. So yep. this is actually like wonderful, right? Um, all very good. Very nice. Okay. Side so, quest so, complete. Yes, keyboard shortcuts, good. <laughs> good question, good question, friend. Speaking of keyboard nap, does it keep the media controls tabable? Tababble, tabable. Let's find out. Oh. I'm going to tab. Yep, there they are. Whoops, that is yes. not the button I was trying to push. So speaking of, I want to do a quick shout out to the open source team. Speaking of keyboard nav, speaking of accessibility, Jason knows this from the time that we've done shows with Remotely Interesting on Nellify, but mm -hmm. I'm very, very passionate about accessibility, which is why I feel super happy and blessed to be working in close quarters with the open source team. But so our open source team, they, uh, I think, are really strong implementers of the ideology to shift left, which is not leaving accessibility to, to the end, not leaving mm -hmm. accessibility as an afterthought. They really incorporate, our team really incorporates accessibility from the design stage, uh, from the beginning to the point where we actually um, recent, so we built uh, our own custom player called Mux Player, which works with the Mux platform. Mm -hmm. But this Mux Player was built with Media Chrome. Oh, cool. And we, yes, we actually uh, worked with a third party to audit the player that we built with Media Chrome to see, you know, yes, we we have this philosophy. Yes, we've paid attention to accessibility, but how how does it really measure up? What else can we do? What can we improve? And the results that we actually got back were pretty good. There are some things that that we um, are working to to fix, but we didn't get a lot of uh, violations or because it's not all just a checklist. It's not all. Yeah, Yay. you can only you can only like robot check so many things in accessibility. You need real people to do real testing. Yes. So I I really want to stress to people who are considering building their own custom player with Media Chrome and you care about accessibility and you you care about a player that is usable by as large of an audience as possible and is mm -hmm. inclusive, Media Chrome, Media Chrome <laughs> has, has thought about this. <laughs> Use it. Awesome. Um, Inferno Ripper, yes, you can change the styling and position. We're going to get into that right now, I think. Yes, uh, yes. Nightwave is asking, does the Chrome and Media Chrome have anything to do with the Chrome browser? I, Dylan, if you're here, I would love to, I don't actually know the answer to this, but Dylan, if you could answer that one. But in terms of changing... Chrome is unrelated to the Chrome browser, as uh, Dylan says. Yes. 
All right. So, uh, yeah, I, in, Inferno Ripper is excited about customizing positions and, and styling. I'm excited about customizing that. So yes. let's do it. Let's mess around. Yes. Okay. So uh, the person said they were joking when they were saying that, or at least partially, um, ooh, like, ooh, CSS. But I, I am really pumped to share this part because as a CSS half hater, um, I really love that this makes the whole positioning controls thing easier. Tweet, so, I think I think we found the first thing that uh, that is going to fuel our fuel our obvious like eventual nemesisness because I'm very much team CSS. I said I was a half hater. Okay, there's room uh, well, for love. Half nemesis. Then. Room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll accept this. We'll accept this. Um, All right. So, anyways, you were excited because we don't have to write a lot of CSS. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, you were, it's not CSS less, but I just want to show, let's talk about, let's talk about positioning. Let's talk about let's do layout. It. So media Chrome, we use something called slots, uh, to help make, for example, positioning and other mm -hmm. levels of customization easier for you as a user okay. for the people who may not be familiar with the term slots. In the realm of web components, slots are placeholders. That's what you mm -hmm. can think of slots as. So for example, if you take the play button, um, we've made it so that you can optionally slot in or pass in your own custom play button or SVG. Oh. Um, but, and th there, it's not just the play button, the, the slots exist in many places with uh, Media Chrome, but just as an example. Mm -hmm. So you can pass your own play button, SVG, component, whatever. If you don't, it will just render the default play button that we've defined. Gotcha. In terms of layouts and positioning, we've done a similar thing where if you want to go and put your controls at the top, or you want to go and put some of your controls in the center. Mm -hmm. You can use a slot, and it will just magically, magically. Let's let's do it. Appear. I want to move the controls to the top. Do I just add like a slot top? No, that wasn't it. Okay. So, <laughs> so what we can do is let's above the media control bar. Let's make a div. Okay. Let's make a div. You can do a slot. Yes. Um, slot equals, let me just make sure that I remember exactly. It should be top Chrome, top dash Chrome. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So inside, inside of the div, let's just pick a button that you want to appear on, at the top. Okay. We're moving the, moving the play button. Move in the hey, play button. Look at it go. So now I have two Magic. play buttons. Yes. You have two play buttons. They actually will both work. Yes. That's cool. So that's at, that's the top chrome. Uh, another popular one. I, I don't know if all players have this, but I feel like I expect a play button in the center. But you, we can also do something similar with the center. So okay. we can make another div. We can make another div. Center Chrome. Slot. I believe it's centered. E D. C C N T R E D. With no Chrome. With Chrome, With but Chrome. Uh, instead of center Chrome, it's centered. Centered. Chrome. Got it. Um. All right. So I'm gonna cut this one and we'll put it in the top here oh right got to close the div is the <clears throat> the thing yes oh what does uh what does a knock mean Ooh. somebody was knocking yeah the that was uh that was the chat letting me know that i wrote bad code oh, okay <laughs> um, just a little oopsie little, little whoops whoops Little whoops. Um, another, some other things that we could move to, oh, we actually don't have any of these controls here. So 
I, for me, I really like to be able to seek. Mm -hmm. We don't have any seek controls right now. Nope. So why don't we, why don't we go and add some into the, maybe into the Saturn Chrome area. Let's maybe put a, a seek back. So we can do media, seek forward, button, button, yeah. We got to seek and let's add a, uh, cause what if we want to go back? If we could only go forward, I don't know. We, 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 might, we might miss stuff. Sometimes I watch a movie and I'm like, what did they say? Let's go back. So it's actually, it's backward. Backward. Forward, backward. That makes sense. Yes. Yes. Some that, additional that customization. My oh. brain did not like what? Oh, I don't like yeah, next to each what other? is the right way to do that? Is it, do you what see, do you, mean? you seek back? Yeah. You would seek back first and then you would do, Oh, Oh, that is weird. My brain you shorted out with the, that. Would you, would you feel less weird if the seek backward button was before the play button? Ah, yes. I feel Does way less feel... weird about that. Okay, everything is all right like in the world. I'm struggling here. Okay, good. I think uh, I think this is a good um, opportunity to just mention what you can do additionally with the seek backward and forward buttons. Mm -hmm. So we have an attribute that allows you to change how much you can seek forward and backward. Because right Ooh, now okay. I believe it's 30, mm -hmm. but you actually can change uh, how much you can seek back so you can do on let's say seek backward mm -hmm. you can add an attribute called seek dash offset equals and then the number of seconds that you'd rather it go back by oh and it's smart enough to update so i don't know if I, let me make this bigger yeah. so everybody can see this says 15 and this says 30 because i updated yes. the the seek backward yep. So they're independent yeah. too, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Now we've got 15 forward and backward. So that is very nice. Very nice. Um, hey, Jimena, thank you for the sub. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Can that be percent of total length instead of fixed seconds? That kind of feels like a UX nightmare to be completely honest. That'd be super confusing. Yeah, according to the docs, it is uh, it is seconds, time in seconds. Seconds. But okay. I guess if I guess if you, we're always open to, or the open source team is always open to feedback. So if you, for whatever reason, want percentage, the answer is that is not available as far as I know. But if you want to submit an issue, you can mm. pitch something. And if you're using something like Mux, I can we could programmatically get this right because we could figure out how long this video is and then do a little math right you probably could you probably Hola. could there's a way you could you could you can always Amena. figure that stuff out yes yes okay so some other layout stuff that we can do is let's say so right now we have the play button in the middle with the seek backward and the forward mm -hmm. button there but what if we only want that there on desktop or we only want that there on mobile. Mm -hmm. We can use media queries to be like, oh, I only want the centered buttons there uh, for whatever condition that you want. And then okay. in the other condition, you can have your play button and your seek buttons at the bottom. Okay, I'm just gonna put the styles right in here, in fact, because that feels easier than jumping between files. Yeah. So if I do uh, media, how are you doing on like a, a viewport width? Or are you doing something different? So we can do, um, I, I, I don't know what the best way is, but the way that I do it, I'm used to doing is a, I believe minimum width and in pixels. So we can do something like that. Okay. So let's do um, like a 500 pixels, I think would be a good. A good thing and then um how how are you targeting are you just doing like a like an you attribute can just do target? classes 
So for I think a class might be a little easier. Or whatever way you're comfortable. Yeah, this will you be fine. Do we'll do um, desktop only, and then we'll do desktop only, and then we'll do display visible, or no, display block. Um, and before that, we'll make it display hidden. So then, as we make this bigger and smaller, it should disappear, but it's not because I did what wrong? Some of the buttons went away. The I should stop waiting in away from my mic. Um... Yeah, weird. What did I do? Display display none. I forgot how CSS works is the... Okay, so now we've got this, and then as I get bigger... Now oh, that should be gone. And it's... Desktop I actually had trouble with this too when I was... <gasps> okay. What am CSS I doing? debug time, friends. Let me just open all these windows here. Okay, let me do something outside of this as well. Um, and what we can do is uh, H1 color red and H1 color blue. And it is... Your H1 is gone. Yeah, what's happening here? What is... Hello? Let me save. Okay. Okay, I've reloaded. You just need a refresh. Okay. Test is blue. Now if I make this smaller, it goes red. Okay, so I think uh... the, the DOM just got out of, out of sync because now... Now that I've reloaded, the media query works. Yes, here so, we go. Okay. Maybe maybe some uh, code sandbox quirks there. Yeah, so you can control. Not only can you customize like which controls are there when they appear, what they. You can also control how they appear on different screens. Okay. Very nice. I'm gonna drop this one out. And we're back to, okay. So now we've got, boom, look at it go. Nice. Okay. So at this point, I, we could change it into choose your own adventure. Do you want to continue down the slot route, which is maybe we can replace the play button with a play button of your style? a seek button of your style, or we can get into some CSS variables that will allow you to make stuff really customize, like the color of the time range, the color of the little circle, and so let's, on and so forth. Let's start with the CSS variables, and then let's, if we still have time, we'll finish with a fully custom button. Um, yeah. Because I, I actually have mute and uh like a mute toggle that I've, I've i can pull okay. off my site so we can pull that in as as custom media okay all right so in the docs just so everyone can follow along there is a dedicated styling section let me pop this into twitch twitch styling enter yes it has all of the CSS variables that are available to you and mm. which components you can use them on. Oh, cool. Yeah, because as we look at this, all right, so I'm seeing like the media control background is like this, these um, yeah. dark boxes that are like semi-transparent because as I move through, yeah. you can kind of see different... Uh, yeah, you can change like the background color of the buttons. You can change the hover background. You can change the height, the width, the padding, um, color of the actual like triangle of the play button, mm -hmm. all the things. You could even customize the color of the part of the time range that has loaded already. Mm -hmm. 
That's cool. Ranges, so, so yeah, hover yeah. background, um, hover border, transition, opacity, track. Wow, there's a lot. It's cool. And the buffered color. Yep. Okay. So pretty easy to go pretty deep here. Um, let's open up, I'll open up my site and I have some, some values in here that we can, uh, so pick, yeah, pick like a Jason Langstorff yellow. <laughs> All right. So here's that. And we've got our colors here. So if I go down to my CSS variables down at the bottom, here are all of my variables. So here's the yellow. Um, let me, I think it's this one. Let's just grab this one and we'll come back in here and we will say, uh, it was root. And then I want to set, uh, it was media background, media control background, control background. And do I need to set that elsewhere? So try targeting. So what do you want the all the controls to? Yeah, so that would mean I needed to be inside of here. Yeah, so try targeting media controller instead. And yeah. Oh, is this a refresh issue? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Choices were made. Um, it's, it's so easy to look at. Let's maybe pick a different one. <laughs> so, so maybe, uh, the icon well, color, that's going to be better, right? Uh, media icon. Yeah. Color. I'm that gonna... probably will look better. Let's go icon color. Okay. Refresh. Okay. Yeah. So that's a little that less. Nice. Uh, whew, all right. Um, but pretty immediately, you can you can see this all kind of coming together. And if I look at yeah. some of my other colors here, like I've got this dark blue, um, I could set the media control control background to that darker color. Save it. Refresh. And now I've got Ooh, like whoa. you know kind of kind of pulling in my brand kinda here. Looks nice. um, and then that if we want to make nice. that like, why don't we do do one of these? Make it a little more a um, little more transparent here, right? So just uh, the eight digit hex code. These are opacity for anybody who has, hasn't seen that before. Um, yeah. But so that that is uh, you know pretty immediately customized in a way that is helpful to me yeah so right now because we're uh scoping them to uh everything under media controller mm -hmm. everything that counts as an icon or everything that counts as a media control and its background they're changing but if you only wanted to give a particular control that background color or icon color you can target that and change only it Okay, so let's make the play button the pink color. There we go. Pink. Yes. Right, and this is super so cool this because this is making this... me think of summer. <laughs> like exactly. lemonade? Exactly. Um but so with something like this, if I have like, I've got my gray, here's, here's a, a gray alpha color that I can use. So let me grab this one, drop it in here and let's see what happens. So then these end up with a much more subtle alpha. I probably wouldn't use that because it, it actually disappears entirely, but um, yeah. there's the customization, right? And that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, can I do other things too? Like if I wanted to just border radius, uh, 50% make it, uh, I'm going to get rid of this so we can actually see the, 
the outcome here. Look at that. Circular buttons. <laughs> yes. So you don't have to use CSS variables in order to style it. Um, it just gives you finer tuned control on exactly what it is that you're changing the CSS for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this, like, this is great because it, it shows how quickly we can do some basics. So theming is really straightforward. You grab all these components, you swap them out for your themes, and you end up with something that looks the way that you want it to look. If you want really fine grained controls, you can jump into a particular button and, um, and make it bigger or smaller. Uh, that feels pretty approachable. Um, and it looks like there are a lot more notes in here as well, where we can kind of see, um, yeah, that's nascent. That's fine. Um, yeah, it's uh, what I really like about these docs is it tells you what CSS variables there are, but it mm -hmm. also tells you what what's the CSS property that's underneath. What's the default mm. if you don't change it? Um, it it even gives you notes like, hey, if you use this, it's actually going to affect all the whatever elements inside of Media Chrome. So mm -hmm. it's really helpful. A lot of extra context for you as a user. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is it's it's very clearly something that like I, what I like about it is that we started by copy pasting something that I could have shipped today and I wouldn't have to touch anything. It would just work, um, which is great because mm -hmm. if what I'm trying to do is get something valuable out to the people using my site, I can do that without having to worry too much. I could I just get to say I want this button, this button, this button and off we go. Um, now, yeah. if I'm wanting to you know then later once i've proven that this is a good thing and i want to do more with it then i can customize this to make it more fit my brand um what if i want to do something really wild like i want to put a logo in the top right oh yes so we can i don't know if you have a a link or a file on hand but I do we could try Let's see this one here. Want to inspect? While Jason is looking at that, I just want to read what uh, my teammate has said. Dylan, he says the idea with Media Chrome is that building a video player should feel like building an HTML form. Just use HTML elements and CSS. Yep, that is that is pretty excellent. Okay, That's so I how have, it feels? I have copy pasted a logo, and so if I just kind of drop this down here. Yeah, so there it you is. could, well, that's, is that outside the player? Yeah. Well, it's outside the player right now. So I've just kind of thrown it somewhere. Okay. Um, We've just proved that it's a thing and it works. The, the SVG um, works. So, <laughs> <laughs> check, uh, big green check mark. So uh, we can, wherever we want to put that, it could be the top bar, it could be the center, uh, probably the top bar. We can stick it into the div. And there it is. And from here, you just, we've taken care of, like, it's going to appear at the top. And if you, I don't know, want your logo to be somewhere other than mm -hmm. right there, you can just a little bit more CSS. So we can do something like this, and we'll do a position. What if I do a position absolute and go top? Nope, doesn't like that. So does that mean I need to make this position relative? You could probably, where do you want to put your logo? Right there. At the right, okay. Um, so I just needed to refresh the thing again. Actually, that makes me wonder if I even needed this. Let me save. I think Code Sandbox is uh, is doing doing a little work to mess with me. Yeah, we didn't need that. Yeah, and since, and since you're using position absolute, you probably didn't have to, well, actually, no, because you did, well, you took away the relative. Um, there are different ways that you can get that on the right there. You could use mm -hmm. display flex on the div and done like justify content. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that instead. That's let's, another one. Yeah, let's take that out. And instead, what we'll do is we will take our um, top Chrome Give it a div. Top Chrome. And say display flex. And we'll do justify content. 
Uh, and then everybody's favorite Dave Matthews song, The Space Between. I don't know this song. Do other people know this song? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. you, I, you, you don't need to know this song. It's definitely one of those, like, um, I'm showing my advanced age here. Um, but that's not working, probably because <laughs> something needs to be white people song. Shit. <laughs> I, yeah, you're I not didn't say wrong. it. Jason didn't you're say not it. wrong. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yes, we have. You know what? I don't want to mess with the CSS, so I'm just going to roll back. Uh, let's. There we go. Stick here. And now we've got a uh, semi-transparent logo stuck up in the top right. And we can do something like, you know, make it a little bit shorter, or make it 100 pixels wide or something. Um, yeah, the point is you can add a logo and put it wherever you want. You can do whatever you want, and it is magical. Um, you could have two play buttons, which we do. Okay, that mm -hmm. doesn't work. So I'm just going to, I'm instead of debugging an SVG, we're going to let it be the size that it is. So, Jason, Jason's doing the thing where uh, does everybody uh, watching really it happen? Yes, I've changed the pixel plus five more pixels. <laughs> okay, I'm done with that. We're not yes. doing any more of that. I'm going to get rid of our double play button. And now yeah. we have like um, this is something that you could ship. We've got. Our, our playback controls, we've got volume, we've got a range, we've got some of these little buddies. Uh, we've got a watermark yep. in here. And like, as we play, it's cool. Ta-da. Yes. Other, as you're playing that, I'm remembering other useful things that you can do to customize. You can uh, customize the auto hide situation. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe right now, there is a default auto hide. So you know how when you click the play button or yeah, mm -hmm. it starts, you move your mouse a little bit off of it. Um, after X many seconds, it will auto hide the controls. You can totally disable the auto hide or you can customize the auto hide to the number of seconds that you want. Um, nice. And can you do that on like a per section? So if I want this one to always stay, but I want these ones to auto hide after a few seconds, does that work? I have only, personally, I've only tried it on the media controller. Um, so, I mean, we could just, why don't we just try it? First, like, let's do it on the media controller. Okay. Uh, let's do auto hide equals a number of seconds. Let's do five. Okay. Reloading. Five. Five. Nope. Nope, I didn't do it. Did it not? Hold on. Reloading. Try not try not to leave the player for it. Uh, try going. Yeah, let's count. Okay. Yeah. So it that, auto that, hides that felt like as an soon as you exit. Five seconds. That was an extremely <laughs> long five seconds, but it did work. So if I'm here, I guess when it's paused, it's going to stay showing. But um, that is very cool. So then that makes sense. So then if I want to do auto hide on, well, actually, can you, if I do like auto hide off or something like that, does it keep okay. it on forever? So it's not off. The number that the, our open, wonderful open source team chose was negative one. If you don't want it to auto hide at all. Got it. Okay. So we're going to save, we're going to refresh. We're going to hit play and now it does not auto hide. Okay. So I want to see if I can do that just for this top Chrome. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we'll just take that as feedback from a potential user. Okay. So that doesn't work. Yeah, my uh, based on where auto hide is in the docs, it's specifically located under media controller. I feel like I it's have, for all controls. I have a theory. 
Oh, they all hide no matter what, huh? Yep. Oh, so the whole thing hides. So anything in here is going to hide on top of the video. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Okay. Other things that you can style, like, for example, you know how with Netflix, uh, Netflix iconic, like red, they have it so that the the circle that represents where you are in the time range is a color. Mm -hmm. um, and also the amount of video that you've already watched is the same color. You mm -hmm. can also style that. So if you wanted to extend your learn with Jason yellow mm -hmm. to that like Netflix style situation in the time range, you can do that. That would be, we've got media control background. Where did my range go? So range, thumb height, range. Think, yes. Thumb, thumb is the circle. Mm -hmm. So you can do eyes. Track border, track background feels right. So let's grab this one and do copy here. Is that the right thing? That was not the right thing. Let me media range track transition translate buffered color are you looking so are you trying to style the circle uh well that the was the, yeah the thumb the thumb color so we should be able to do media range thumb background got it for the circle And there it is. Okay. And then if we yes. wanted these uh, to be the same, we could we could do that. But um, I'm actually more curious. I got a. There's a good question from uh, Con Connor Mar um, about subtitles. Captions. Captions. Sub subtitles. So. Yes. How does one do such a thing here? And we can we can do All some right. like messy ones right like i can go get uh something completely unrelated to this video and just throw it in so that we can turn them on and off probably but let's um let's see captions so i know that there's a captions button mm -hmm. number one we could start by trying to add that which is media captions button and then, so many windows. I'll grab an example file for you. That would be splendid. So I know that you can do things like you can add tracks. Like if you wanted a preview thumbnail image, you can mm -hmm. add a track. I would imagine, I haven't played with this myself, but I know that captions are generally possible in the things that we build. Mm -hmm. I would guess that you can add a track. I have a suspicion that this example is going to include actual captions. Maybe? Yes. Track, thumbnails, metadata. Add this nested inside the element. Did you pay something? Let me see. Okay, yes. Uh, if we go to the Twitch chat, Dylan, he added, copy the track tag. Got it. That's in the chat, and then we can stick it under the yeah. Okay, so there is a track. Yep. Captions are on. Captions are on. Do we need Let's to do a little refresh? Yeah, so that is uh that looks correct, the VTT file. I think maybe I just need to reload. Yes. Turn this on. Play. Always hard refresh. 
Am I missing a... Because I've got the captions button, but do I need to put captions... Like, is there an element for the captions on... Uh, captions button? Keyboard. The track looks correct to me. Yeah, the so track looks the correct. Track. We have the story. Kind subtitles, English. I know tracks work in general because I've seen it work with the thumbnail. Oh, maybe I turned it off when I did this. Ooh, that'd be controversial. Hmm. No, it doesn't seem to be doing the thing. Um, why don't, let's just first verify that tracks work period. So why don't we, why don't we try to add a thumbnail? Okay. Do something like this. I'll put it in the Twitch chat. Okay. Wait, that's more, that's another. Yeah, this is another track, but meant for thumbnails. Wait, so oh, I got it. okay, thumbnails. Maybe the video is too short for the first track. Um, good question. Unsafe attempt to load. Oh, it's a frame. Domain. Does that work? Will it work out here? This is one of the things that was frustrating about Code Sandbox that we had to be out here to look at stuff, certain things. Yeah, it looks like it's fighting us on uh it's fighting us on third party URLs. Um which is that's okay. We can It would work like this. <laughs> is the is the is the answer yes. and then if we weren't using uh Code Sandbox which we don't have time to change um then you could do that yeah. so let's uh, these don't work due to cores yes errors. yes and mealman we are looking at mad max and it's buttery if you play buttery uh if you try a media chrome implementation yourself uh using the docs if you copy that it's so buttery if you play it the frames yeah it's definitely like high quality video Yes. With the remaining time that we have, I think uh, we could move off of this temp. Well, I guess like more, I was going to say temporarily, but basically indefinitely in mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, live stream. But I do want to show that because right now this video is a Mux video. I really want to show that you can in fact use it with something that's not Mux. Mm. Yeah. Isn't there like an open video thing that you can just get an MP4? So in, I believe it is under the get started section of, of the docs. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a list of other types of videos that you could support. So for example, there's a, there's different streaming technology out there and mm -hmm. some of them are propri proprietary. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, if you host with us, we want you to use our player. So to make it so that a media Chrome media player works with things that would otherwise be proprietary, our team has made um, web components. So, for example, YouTube, Vimeo, web components that essentially have an iframe of a proprietary player underneath so that you can, in fact, Use Media Chrome to build the UI of your dreams, but have the video be hosted on YouTube or Vimeo. Okay, so I'm very curious about how this is going to work. So I'm going to grab, here is my, um, the YouTube video element. And then I need to grab this bit. And so is this... This bit here 
should theoretically. Hold on, did you just did you just Google this YouTube player, or is this? I from found docs? it in your docs. Okay, so if we click, am I in the, the wrong YouTube place? Video element. Well, I mean, if you clicked it from the docs, I would hope not. Uh, so we the YouTube element looks first like we're we're gonna need a script. So um, yeah, I got that, and it is loading. Okay, beautiful. So we, and you just pasted. Pasted the, the whole example here. Yep. YouTube video. Yep. Slot. Hold on. Let me look at your screen in depth here. So I'm outside of the media controller entirely at this point. I've, I've embedded two of them. <laughs> uh, let's uh let's comment out the mad max video source this part here no the uh if you go up to the video tag that we were using as the original media source let's just comment that out okay oh that i think it's a battle of the comments right now yeah there we go or just delete it because we don't really need it at this point and can um, I can I put my YouTube video so like inside here to get the? Does it? Yeah. So now we are we we're gonna use slots to say like this is the media source that we're gonna use instead. So with the YouTube player, mm -hmm. we can slot equals media on it. Get player state is not a function. Uh yes. Try, um, let me paste some more code for you. I, where's the chat? Yeah, try refresh first. Okay. It's, it looks like they're competing with each other. Try, uh, take out the, try taking out the controls because it says controls. Right? We shouldn't have those there. Okay. Okay. I've seen this before. Refresh. Yeah. Slot equals media. YouTube video. That's interesting. I, uh, could it be, so you see at the top there, there's a comment. Normally with the comments, they're gray, but I just hope that's not doing anything. Try um Y O. That is exactly what I have. YouTube video slot equals media source is that YouTube video. And you said we have the script tag in here for the YouTube element? Yes. Got them both in here. Let me just do a full refresh. Let's see if that changes anything. It does not like something about this. If you go to the actual URL at the top of the preview, is it different? No. Hatred. <laughs> Hatred. Let's inspect. Let's inspect. So it's given us media controller. YouTube video. And then this looks like the full embed. So something, it's like not picking it up somehow. Interesting. And the iframe is underlined. Is it saying that something is wrong with the iframe? iframe is allow not? is not supported by firefox for uh, android but that's i think that's only in firefox for android so i think I'm that's more curious. of like a something's gonna get weird here um but it does so i i'm wondering is it supposed to is there like a customized 
Uh, really, all you should need is the script to use the element and the element itself with the source. Um, I'm curious if it looks broken like this if you open it in Chrome. I'm just I, curious. Well, I'm in so I'm in Edge, not Firefox. So that's why I think that oh, okay. um, that's why I think that was just like a warning, like, hey, this might break in the future. Um, but I can open okay. Chrome. No, I can't. I don't have Chrome installed on this machine. <laughs> um but uh live demo things i looking at these docs i think i'm trying to hold this wrong like i don't i don't think this one is um element api matches the html5 video tag so it can easily be swapped with other video but i think it's like for the html5 element and then it's not doing the other it's not doing the other things that we were talking about so that makes me think I'm, that i'm doing something wrong i'm really curious if you go back to your code sandbox mm -hmm. i think at the end of the script tag after youtube video element it says at whatever what mm -hmm. if we just or am i reading that wrong what if yeah what if we remove that and refresh would it take issue oh yeah it doesn't like so I feel like it is unhappy with, oh no, I busted my history on this. Um, so I lost our original video. Let's get back up here. This was the one. So let's get back in here. And if we put this back in, then we've got working video. Um, so I think I'm holding the, the YouTube video wrong. I don't know that it's in it. The docs imply that it's not intended to be nested inside of a media controller. So I might be, might be wrong. I, um, why don't maybe YouTube just hates us today. Why don't we try Vimeo? Sure. We're getting stubborn here. Okay. Let's try one more time. Um, here's Vimeo. Do a Vimeo. And if this one doesn't work, we are going to have to, uh, we'll end yeah. here. But let's grab these two yeah. bits. We'll go in here. Uh, we will get rid of this YouTube. And I'm going to grab this Vimeo video. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put that in here and refresh. OK, so let's get a, rid of the controls on it and put slot equals media on this guy. Okay, refreshing and same, same general problem. Um, so not 100% so sure what's going on there, but that is, uh, is maybe a move the unpackaged script mm. to the head. Sure, I can do that. And then we'll get this back in. Let me get my clipboard do one of these although it didn't work live because we've got two minutes left and it's probably not going to work out although it didn't work live in the docs if you go under that compatible player section there are examples like rendered examples that you can click so yeah we're trying to implement it and didn't work out here in the live demo but if you click example in the docs you can see how we've been able to implement a YouTube hosted video or a Vimeo hosted video or a Wistia hosted video as is. And so, yeah, so these look like they, they work great standalone, but I don't think they're, they're not happy when they're nested inside of a media controller. So I think we, we might be trying to do the same job twice is my, that's my current suspicion. Um, just since they are like, this is rendering a full media controller is what I'm seeing in the, in the demo. Yeah, so my teammates say your mar markup was right. And I feel the same. I feel like the markup is right. Uh, we ha added the slot. Can you move the unpackaged script to question mark? We, we did remove controls. Wrong docs. There's examples in the media Chrome docs. Yeah. So Oh, oh yeah. So here it goes. Yeah. This is... Do we need to add yep. this plays in line? Uh, 
I, it's so interesting. Let's see if I. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. So uh, let me just do one Darn. more quick shout out to the captioning. We've had Amanda with us from White Coat Captioning all day today. Thank you very much. And that's made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic. Uh, we have been hanging out with Twee today. So make sure you go and give Twee a follow on the old internet. Um, we're playing with the Media Chrome. Here is the GitHub account for that. Uh, I will drop, I'm going to revert this. I, oh, I can't revert it. Um, I'll, I'll fix this and revert it so that we can share it. But if anybody wants to go and look at this, that is the code sandbox. We'll get that updated. Um, and while you're looking at things on the internet, make sure you go and check out the schedule. We got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, this, this one on, uh, on Thursday is going to be super fun. We're going to play with the shared element transition API, which I've been very, very excited about. Um, and a lot of good things coming up. So make sure you go and check that out. Uh, Tweet, any uh, parting words for the chat? Yeah, I hope that you all try Media Chrome out if you haven't already. Try and build your own custom player. If you have already used Media Chrome, let us know how you like it. And if you really crave some interaction with the video community, I would recommend either tweeting us at MuxHQ on Twitter, or if you are a Slack Discord type of person, we do have a Slack channel for video engineers. It is video-dev.slack.com. Um, if you ever have any questions about video engineering stuff, you can totally ask people in there. There's even a sub Slack channel for questions specifically related to Mux. So come join us. Excellent. All right, y'all. Well, we are going to call this one uh, a mostly success. We got some really cool stuff going with uh, with custom video, and we will follow up with some tweets about how to do it with the other players. Um, thank you all very much for hanging out. We will we'll go find somebody to raid, and we'll see you next time.